What is going on, my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? The day has finally arrived. The CS from Staccato is finally in my hands. Many of you, well, maybe not many of you because you're my YouTube subscribers, but on my Instagram, I have been bombarded with questions on how the CS stacks up to other guns like the C or the C2 or any other type of popular handguns that are out there in this size. And I've always put it off just because I didn't have one in my hands, but now I do. And there's a lot to unpack in this little package. And like women always say, great things come in small packages. But before I get into all of that, guys, Staccato did send me this CS for review for free. No payment was involved whatsoever. Just want to get that out of the way before I get too deep into this. Now let's get right into what you're getting when you get one of these in your hands. You're getting a nice staccato zippered range bag, range handgun bag. You have a staccato CS patch right in the front. And if you flip that over, it does come with three magazines, guys. You have one in the gun and you have two here. I'll get into the magazines a little later in the video. And if you flip that over, you have a section here where you can put the firearm in. Then this section here is where your like manual and your uh, card where they show you the grouping that they got before it left the factory. And you also have this bag here that has a lock and you have a punch and Allen keys to make your adjustments to your gun if you needed to. But now that we have the bag out of the way guys, what is going on here? And I'm gonna kind of bounce around in comparison with the C2 and the C because I think those are the most comparable to this little guy. And right off the bat, guys, this is the smallest staccato. You can call it the micro staccato or the baby staccato, but this is the smallest staccato that they have to offer. Let's start right at the front here with the barrel. The barrel is a three and a half inch bull barrel chambered in nine mil. And if you're looking at the bottom of the barrel here, you have some beautiful fluting that goes all the way back into the uh, barrel itself. So at the front, you do have a flush fit reverse crown. Now, moving on down to the recoil spring, this is a patent pending dual recoil spring from Dawson Precision. I'm gonna show you a side by side right here. That way you can compare them to the C and the C2. Now moving on to this slide, it is a slight change of design compared to the C2 or the C or the P or whatever staccato is out there at this time. I think it is designed for the better. Now, let me go over the C first because this C was one of the first production uh, Cs that ever came about when staccato was first starting off as their staccato endeavors. But this C right here, if you can see at the front, there's a lot of wear there. And that's because it has some pretty sharp angles at the end. And when you're holstering and unholstering, it is rubbing against that holster. Now, when they went on to the C2 and they started uh, redesigning the slide and how it looked, you can see that they made the front end thinner to counteract that holster wear that you're gonna start getting there. You're not gonna get a lot of drag when you're holstering and unholstering. Not saying that you're still not gonna get any type of wear there, just saying it's gonna be a little bit less. With the CS, you can see that they definitely took that into consideration when cutting this guy. They did a nice angled cut on both of those sides and they also did the dust cover a little bit differently as well. The dust cover on the C and the C2 are more of a straight angle. So if you're looking at this C2 here, you can see that the front end cut on the top slide is at a slight angle and then it comes down to a straight. Now, if you're looking at the CS, you can definitely see that they made it blend in with that lower dust cover right there. So it looks very sleek and very clean. Loving that design, Staccato. Now moving on up, you do have your front fiber optic sight, which is pretty much a standard what they're putting on all their other staccatos. And you do have the blacked out rear sight that is pretty much exactly identical to the other staccatos as well. This is the Dawson Precision Optic Cut or the DPO. And you can take this optic plate off and slap in any Dawson Precision plate onto this guy and put any nice optic that you want on here. Um, you could also put other aftermarket uh, optic plates onto this. Uh, it's pretty much up to you on what you want to put on there. But basically, the sights and the optic cuts are 
identical to the other staccatos aside from this because this doesn't have an optic cut. Now, the serrations on the staccato are virtually identical to the other staccatos. Now on the slide right here, you do have an external extractor. Basically on the rest of the staccato line, you have internal extractors. I'm not sure why they went with an external extractor. I did not ask that question when I was at SHOT Show, but I'll ask some of my buddies at Staccato on why they went with the external. On the topic of the serrations, you do have this milling that they made into the barrel there. It does blend very nicely with the serrations or milling that you see on the outside. It looks very sleek and I'm loving that a ton. I hope they start going with that design on all the staccatos here moving forward. And I also hope that they would offer a service to send these staccatos in because I think that will really set these other staccatos off and make it look very nice like this CS here. Now moving on down to the accessory rail, you do have a slot cut for a light like this TLR7 sub. Now the TLR7 sub looks beautiful on this little gun. It is completely flush with the front end of that barrel. My OCD is loving it on how flush that is right now. The slide stop, slide release is the same as the other staccatos and you have the same ambidextrous safety and you also have the same hammer as you do on the other staccato but not to see guys this is a first gen so they did change a whole lot from this guy going on to the other c's and then moving on to the c2s now on the grip safety it's a little bit different the beaver tail of the grip safety here is rounded off compared to the c2 or the c or any of the other staccatos and i'm loving that design a lot more just because when you carry a c2 it's not super sharp on that beaver tail on the edge, but you can definitely feel a slight poke on those edges because it is at a corner angle right there that you see. And on the C2, that being rounded off, it's not going to stab you in the stomach as much as the C2 would. Now moving on down to the grip, that is another major change on the staccato line. The grip is slimmer than the C2. It is smaller than the C2 and it feels better than the C2's grip. I have small hands guys, I love grips that are smaller. They just feel better in my hands. Not saying that I have problems with the C2, just saying that going to the CS definitely feels a little bit more comfortable in my hands than the C2, especially with this Gen 2 style stippling that they have here. This is still the Gen 1 texturing that you have on the C2. They also have the P that has this like Gen 2 style texturing on there. I'm glad that they're keeping that style of texturing on this uh, CS here. It is aggressive enough where I'm not gonna lose my grip every time I shoot. And it does go all the way up the side of that guy. One of the changes that I don't really like that they did on this little grip is the fact that they didn't do a little double undercut. Now it's probably not gonna be a huge thing, but they were doing it with the first gen C's as you can see here. And you can see on the C2, you have a cut here and you also have a little bit of cut here before you get to the end of that trigger guard. And on the CS, you just, literally have it rounded off here and then it's flat all the way through. Not a huge deal, just I like the double undercuts. Now on this side you do have the mag release which is also textured and that's another difference that you're gonna see between the C, the C2 and the other staccatos. I'm not sure if they're changing that on the newer staccatos from, but from what I own and I have, I do not see this texturing on there. Now another major change is the magazine. This mag is completely redesigned compared to all the other staccato mags. This is a 16 round flush fit magazine to this gun and it's, Amazing that they are keeping the same 16 round capacity compared to the 16 rounds that come on this Staccato C2. Now this is 17, but it's not flush fit. Don't know where my 16 round is at guys, but when you have a 16 round in here, it is flush fit on the Staccato C2. So a smaller gun with the same capacity. <laughs> And so far, these magazines have been completely reliable. I'll go over the reliability in a second, but I have not had any issues with running these three magazines in this gun. And usually when it comes to 2011s, the magazines become a big problem when you don't make them right or you don't tune them right or you just don't take care of your magazines right. They cause a lot of issues in 2011s, but these have not been giving me problems and I've been dropping them in the dirt and stuff like that. And so far they've been solid. 
Now the trigger, the trigger is an aluminum curved trigger. Now the trigger doesn't have texturing on the front of it though. So I just wanted to point that out. Now this trigger is coming in around four pounds for me. They state on their website that they're coming from four to four and a half, but this one is four pounds exactly. I went on my trigger pull gauge. four pounds and let's go ahead and check that trigger out for you guys. So you got that little bit of play there in the wall, break, reset, break again. The trigger is extremely nice, but that's pretty much expected out of Staccato 2011, right? They have beautiful triggers in them. And to add to that, I would not want a trigger lighter than this four pounds I have here because I would not want to stick this little guy next to my little guy with a lighter trigger than four pounds just because accidents do happen, guys. I want to go over a couple comparisons for you guys here so that way you can see what exactly is the differences side by side next to these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on a scale for you and show you guys the weight differences. Obviously on this C2, you can't really gauge the weight too much just because it does have an optic which is gonna add a little bit more weight, but you kind of get the gist of the weight difference between the C2 and the C. Now, I definitely want to show you the sizes side by side. I'm going to start with the C first. If you're looking at the back of the beaver tail to the front of the barrel, you can definitely tell that the C is longer than the CS. And if you're looking at the grip, the length, the C is shorter. But remember, guys, the C, if I didn't already mention it, the C is single stacked with an eight round magazine. I believe this is eight rounds. Yes, eight rounds, seven or eight, one of the two. Not that many rounds, but the C has a shorter frame compared to the 16 round CS frame. Now also, if you're looking at the frames, the C is thinner than the CS. So the C is definitely the thinnest staccato, but you're sacrificing a lot of mag capacity with the thinnest staccato. And unfortunately they no longer offer this, but really do you wanna carry a thin staccato and sacrifice all the rounds you're gonna be getting? that you could get with the CS or the C2. And if you're comparing the C to the C2, it is literally identical in every way other than the lower portion, which is just a thinner single stack. So I'm not really heartbroken that the C is discontinued. I just wanted to bring it out to show you what it's developed into. Now the CS compared to the C2, and I'm gonna have to look back at this footage guys, because I feel like I've been saying CS, C2, C something, and I'm gonna get these names mixed up, but you kind of get the point of what I'm doing when every time I'm pulling these out, right? The CS and the C2, if you're looking at them, it is a longer barrel than the CS. And if you're looking at the frame, the C2 is definitely wider on the grip area than the CS. Also, now that I'm going over comparisons, I know some of you guys that might be carrying a different gun that's not a staccato that might be looking at a staccato for carry, uh, want to see how your stacks up to it. And I have a couple of popular options here. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a short comparison with all of them compared to the CS. So first off, we're looking at the staccato X. Go! We're looking at the SIG P365XL. I'm gonna go from the front, uh, how should I go here? From the front of the barrel to the end, there you go. And from the back of the grips. From what I'm seeing here is the Staccato CS is a little bit thicker than the uh, SIG P365 in terms of the width. Now bringing up the Springfield Hellcat, show you the tops of them, and then show you the backs of the grips. And the width of the grip on the CS is uh, slightly bigger as well than the Hellcat. Smith & Wesson Shield on the top, then on the back of the grips. The Smith & Wesson Shield, and this is the Shield Plus, by the way, is thinner grip-wise than the CS. The new Canic Mete that I just reviewed in the video before this, front of the barrel to the back, and the width of the grips, the Mete is definitely smaller and thinner. Now, last but not least, 
the Sig X Macro, almost identical in length. The uh, beaver tail on the Staccato is slightly longer than the X Macro, and the grips look almost identical in width. If you're looking at this lineup, other than the X Macro, the 365XL, the Hellcat, the Shield, the Mete are all like micro, micro guns, and the X Macro is like a slightly bigger micro gun. I don't know where it fits in the category of a uh, compact or a micro or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's just a little bit bigger gun. I've been contemplating this X macro just because of the bigger grip on it. All of those guns have tiny little grips. They're a little bit harder to mitigate recoil. And on the topic of mitigating recoil, the Staccato CS is a whole different animal for a gun in this size. When you're looking at it compared to all those other little micro guns, it is almost similar in the size, but it does not shoot like those little guns at all. Those are snappy little guns and they are harder to control than like the C2 or the bigger guns like a Glock. 19 or a Glock 17. This gun shoots very smooth for a gun of this size. Even when it's next to the X Macro, the X Macro with that compensator was one of the softer shooting micro guns that I own. But when I got this CS in my hands, it's a whole different animal. If you're putting this into the micro gun category, this is a smoother, flatter shooting gun. But if you're comparing it to the other Staccatos, like the C2 and the C, it is um, not 100% exactly like them. It's almost there, just by a tad. Very manageable though, very pleasant to shoot. So this patent pending recoil system and the way they tune this gun, that formula is doing work. Basically, you gotta try it to believe it. But now that I went over all this little comparison and stuff like that, guys, how reliable has it been for me? Just so you know, I just got this not too long ago and I already put a thousand rounds through it. I kind of went overboard from my first initial testing that I usually do with guns. I usually go for 500 rounds, but I was having way too much fun with this little guy. And I had a box of a thousand rounds and I didn't have a box of a thousand rounds. So <laughs> this gun was extremely reliable within those thousand rounds did not oil anything, did not have any type of lagging issues. Even after me shooting around my vehicle and shooting around dirt and stuff like that and debris getting around, it did not have any type of uh, hiccups whatsoever. The magazines were 100% reliable and I can't wait to put a lot more rounds through this little guy. I have high hopes for the CS because the C2 I have here probably has around 5,000 rounds to it. Then I have an XC that has another 5,000 rounds. And I have my older guns. I have STIs that have upwards of 15,000 rounds. Probably a lot more than that because I have an STI. Maybe I'll bring it out for you guys one second. This DVC3 gun here has been my baby for many, many, many years. And I have beat the piss out of it. This magwell is completely destroyed. The slide is grinding off from I don't know what. From the STI standpoint, and that, those of you that don't know, STI is now known as Staccato. So Staccato was formerly known as STI. And this gun has been phenomenal for me. This gun, I completely trust 100% that it's always gonna work for me. And the same trust that I have in that DVC3 gun is the same trust that I have in the Staccatos that I have shot. And this is hard for me to say, but since this is a completely redesigned little Staccato, I 100% want to shoot this a lot more to feel 100% confident. My heart is telling me don't worry about it, but my brain is telling me let's shoot a lot more rounds and actually prove it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you another update, maybe at like 5,000 rounds, let's say. Let me, once I get to 5,000 rounds, I'll give you a 5,000 round update on how it's worked because everybody knows when it comes down to first gen anything, some things might have problems, but within that 1,000 rounds, work beautifully, so. I'm just playing devil's advocate here, guys. This gun is 2,500 bucks. That's a lot of money for some of you. And if you're going to be thinking about investing in that, I would suggest first figuring out the situation you're in. Do you train enough? 
Do you dry fire enough? Have you taken classes? Do you have some sort of blueprint on how you want to become a better shooter? Because buying a $2,500 gun is not going to make you a better shooter. No matter how great this gun shoots, it will never make you a great shooter. You have to get out and you have to train and you have to train hard and you have to train with a purpose. And if you can't do that, train at home and train with a purpose. Because me having three kids, I do not get out and shoot as much live ammo as I can. Only when I pretty much film these videos and I kind of go overboard when I do shoot it because I get a little bit too uh, excited shooting these guns because I never get out as much anymore. But having three kids makes it extremely difficult for me to go out to the range as often as I want. And I 100% dry fire every day to stay tuned to my guns. It is a deteriorating skill, guys. You have to go and train as much as you can. But if you do have the money to blow, go ahead and check one of these out. See what it's all about. Staccato has their Staccato range days and events and stuff like that. Check in with them and see if you could actually test some of these guns out and see which one you actually like. You might like the C2 over the CS. But as of now, I think the Staccato CS is the ultimate carry gun out of the Staccato lineup. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I appreciate all of your interest in my channel. I love giving you as much information as I can. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. Love you. Catch you in the next one.